Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Veronica Horn, and I'm the President and CEO of the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to the Chamber's Big Strategies for Small Business Webinar Edition. And a special welcome to the guests, all of you that are joining us today. Chamber members form a vibrant pool of knowledge, passion, and talent. They are entrepreneurs, philanthropists, executives, movers and shakers, and doers and neighbors with a shared vision to elevate our community through business. Members grow through and opportunities like this to connect with each other, policymakers and vital resources included. They advance professional and business goals by connecting through events, education, community initiatives, and service opportunities. In fact, you'll find a chamber member seated at the table of nearly every growth initiative impacting Saginaw County. For all of you guests joining us today, we would like to help you grow your network by giving away a 2021 chamber membership along with a $500 of free radio advertising with Alpha Media. We have allotted time after each presenter for your questions. We want this to be interactive today. Simply enter your question through the Q&A feature. We have a lot of great information to share and we'll try to get to every question. If not, we'll forward it to the presenters and you will be answered directly. One of our priorities at the Chamber is to, put, to support small business success. We're looking at the current business environment from a new perspective, shining a light on new opportunities that have materialized as a result of this virus, as well as discussing what is possible. Back in May, the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce partnered with Saginaw Future to help provide vital financial aid to Saginaw County small businesses. The additional support was provided by the Consumers Energy Foundation and is an inspirational example of how the Saginaw community has always rallied during difficult times to support one another. We're happy to be able to continue funding most of the additional grant applications from the previous Michigan Small Business Relief Program because of the very generous contributions of the Consumers Energy Foundation and who support you who are attending today. But before we go into the presentation, the big strategy for small business events there are made possible thanks to our premier sponsor, Great Lakes Bay Michigan Works. Thank you for supporting this event series. And now to begin our program, I'd like to invite Cheryl Tarrant, Business Director of Services and Community Relations with Great Lakes Bay Michigan Works, to share a few words about the programs and resources available through the Great Lakes Bay Michigan Works. Welcome, Cheryl. Thank you, Veronica. 2020, what a year, right? It's been a ride. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity to really thank the Saginaw Chamber of Commerce for their partnership and continued leadership um, for the business community throughout this entire difficult year. I also want to acknowledge our legislators from the Great Lakes Bay region who really worked hard to lead efforts to restore the Going Pro Talent Fund to the 2021 budget. Along with partners such as the Chamber, this Chamber, we worked really hard to bring the money back to the Great Lakes Bay region. And now, um, real quick, with rapid turnover, we are gearing up to assist our region's employers again for 2021's Going Pro Training Fund. The Going Pro Training Fund is a highly competitive grant offered through the Workforce Development Agency and made available to employers in our region through the Michigan Works Agency. The overall goal of this program is for employers to provide training that enhances talent, productivity, and employment retention while increasing the quality and competitiveness of Michigan's employers. This program is not designed to just cater to big business. Um, I have found that uh, through the scoring criteria that is set out in this grant, it's actually made for small businesses and for medium businesses. The focus of this program has never changed. It has always been to 
increased short-term trainings resulting in industry recognized credentials, certificates, and degrees. Here at the Great Lakes Bay Region uh, Michigan Works Office, myself, my business service team, we would love the opportunity to talk to you about how this really competitive grant could assist you and your companies. Um, this grant application will be open from November 2nd to the 30th of November. The only way to apply is to come through the Great Lakes Bay Michigan Works Office. You can contact us at 989-395 one six five zero you could go to michiganworks.com or you can contact me um, my information i'm sure will be shared um, we are forever grateful to our chambers of commerce our edcs um, community members businesses um, educational providers here in our region who worked so hard to bring this money back to our region and now great lakes bay michigan works is going to work really hard to make sure that the employers in our region benefit from the funding so with that, it is always a pleasure to sponsor programs such as this. And you guys have a great afternoon. Have a great program. Thank you, Veronica, for all the help you and your team give us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, you know, this program wouldn't be possible without the support of the Great Lakes Bay Michigan Works. We're all, we're all working together to try and bring you business members in our community into the folds of the chamber, but also to help you through this time. Um, it's now my pleasure, speaking of bringing resources to you, to introduce today's featured presenters who will provide tips to help you run your business through effective digital marketing, managing cash and credit, the power of relationship building, and a number of resources for minority owned businesses. Our panelists include Jimmy Green, President of the Associated Builders and Contractors and Founder of the Center for Minority Entrepreneurial Enterprise. You'll hear more about this exciting program. It's new and Jimmy will lead it with all of his passion. David Brown, a good friend, Vice President and Commercial Lender at Isabella Bank. And Kevin Brown, Senior Marketing Consultant at Alpha Media, another dear friend and somebody that has valuable resources for you. So with that, I'd like to open by welcoming Jimmy Green. Thanks, Veronica. I hope you could see me. If you can't, well, that's okay. I've got to talk anyway. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me. First of all, thank you so much uh, to the Saginaw Chamber of Commerce. I've been a Saginaw Chamber of Commerce member since 1980. I can tell you, I, I don't know anything more powerful than uh, the relationships you establish from people with like minds. Uh, and one of the things I, I do love about the Chamber is that uh, irrespective of where our politics are or how small or large our businesses in our, our business enterprise are, it's still a welcome home for everybody to, to network. I can also share with you that uh, you know, from a small business standpoint, the only way you ever get bigger is by interacting with companies that are larger than you that provide resources. Uh, they also become your very best customers too. And then even, 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 I think more essential to that is there's a feeling, a, a sense of community uh, with the Saginaw Chamber of Commerce that allows everybody to participate, which is ironic because it's one of the reasons why, you know, I started a couple of groups and Veronica, I, I, um, I tease her a lot about this and we, we go back and forth, but uh, years ago, 12 years ago, as a matter of fact, I started a group called the Saginaw Valley African American Leadership Group and I had this great idea about it and I met with uh, Veronica and Bob Vandevener, who was president at the time and I mean, they, they welcomed me with open arms and opened up every door uh, into the business community that, that was necessary to introduce these young aspiring African American men. Uh, and, and it was a great experience. And I always felt like there was something lacking. I ran three classes of it. We put through, um, uh, and then women joined in the third year. So we put through probably about 100 uh, on, uh, entrepreneurs, or at least those folks who I always like to say could be entre entrepreneurs inside of a company too. And I think David Brown, who will speak later, is an example of that. You don't have to own your own company to be a CEO in it. And that's part of what the Center for Minority Entrepreneurial Enterprise is. Uh, and it really is a concept of if not me, then who, and if not now, then when. 
when we start talking about you know the advance of the minority business uh, that's something i think is sorely lacking and when i i speak and veronica knows my heart and soul and so uh, the, what might sound critical isn't it's instructive it's constructive i don't mean when i say certain things for that for people to be defensive about times we really have to take ownership of the fact that we haven't necessarily done a really great job so uh, you can advance the slide too and i'll, I'll kind of give you an idea about how this all happened for me you know it really is providing resources and access into minority communities and let me preface this by suggesting that when i say minority you know i, I i'm a little bit different in the way i defined it let me say i want i defined it a little bit different when i talk talk about minorities and access and opportunity sure that's a color thing for a lot of people but for me you know i'm very very uh, uh a very strong supporter and advocate for lgbt uh citizens in our community but that's also reflective of somebody who grows up in a trailer park who happens to be white who has the same sort of aspirations and the lack of access and opportunity as well too so while i say minority and sure that is a broader stroke uh and I think you have to start dotting I's and crossing T's before you ever try to pigeonhole me into determining what that means. Because I base it based on my, uh, where I'm out in the community and I see people who truly need these access and opportunities. And, and so I don't tend to discriminate about that because I think opportunity is colorless. Uh, even though, you know, we create these mission statements with an intent. Uh, in Saginaw in particular, um, you know, there is a, a there's a wealth of opportunity and two little people participating in that opportunity. When I came to Saginaw in 1980, I had a mentor, Henry Marsh, and a banker named Harold Evans, who taught me everything there was about community. Uh, one of the things I said to Harold Evans, and unfortunately I, I'm saying it to this day, is I don't believe Saginaw will ever be a full Saginaw until you take the epicenter of it, which is the corner of, Sa of Genesee and Washington right there by that second national bank. And instead of looking toward the other side of the bridge, you start looking at advancement and growth down Genesee all the way to the Dixie. That to me is reflective of the growth of Saginaw. And I'm not talking about Michigan Works that's there right now, which is great. I'm not talking about Delta College, which is there right now. I'm talking about help wanted signs, aspiring enterprises down Genesee because that's where black people live, let's face it. And so being able to populate job opportunities in that community was central to me, it was critical to me. And I, I can't do it obviously by myself, but the thought is mine. And I always thought with Savalti, there was something missing. And then it took me this long to remember what that is, opportunity. So you can advance the slide right now, please. And so with this in particular, I have a lot of, I have a ton of access and a ton of opportunity, but that doesn't matter. One of the things I talked to Savalti people was to discount this idea that when we come out of the womb, it seems to populate our minds of, you know, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, and that is very true, because it is not who you know. I know LeBron James, but LeBron James doesn't know me. So that, that influence has absolutely zero to do with my opportunity to access LeBron James and his wealth. So it really is about being connected in the community. And part of what CME, and you'll see that, that, that acronym out there for a reason, part of what CME was designed to do was to create relationships because that is so critical. It's not important that Dick Garber knows me. I need Dick Garber to know you, especially the, asper the aspiring um, uh, entrepreneur, the aspiring middle-class person who wants to contribute back into this community uh, from a philosophical and from a philanthropy standpoint, but more economically, being able to have better resources, more resources. Now that's a, that's a return on investment to a Dick Garber. You know, Dick Garber, he sells cars. He wants people to buy cars. The more people who have wealth or middle-class income are people who are able to buy cars. There is a very simple, complex and mathematical formula to this, again, irrespective of race, creed, color, None of politics, none of that stuff matters when you bring people together in a community whose whole idea is making it a well-being plan. And that's what you see down here. It really is about making sure that everybody has their well-being place in place. But that really starts from the bottom up. People here tend to have a better foothold, but we need to do a better job reaching our minority community, setting up jobs and opportunities 
for us to grow our own. And that's really what it boils down to. We have to be the people who sign the front of a check. The people who sign the front of the check are people who make the rules. So when you're talking about people who uh, come back out of the prison area or people who may not have necessary aptitude, proficiencies, or competencies, but who you want to hire to develop those, you have to be in control of that. And I don't care how small that business is, that access and opportunity provides that. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so again, uh, the Sa what Saginaw Future's done, what the Saginaw Chamber's done, marvelous. Tools, resources, but none of that matters. Absolutely none of that matters. So if Saginaw Future and Joanne Crary roll out this red carpet, like any re other red carpet, somebody's got to walk on it. That's essentially what CME was designed to do. It was designed to take a welder, an electrician, somebody who's underemployed. And I still believe right now that the problem in Black Saginaw isn't necessarily not the, uh, the right people, the right competencies or proficiencies. I believe predominantly most Black Saginaw, they're underemployed. I, I think there are competencies way beyond their job capabilities right now or aptitudes. But the access and opportunity isn't there. That guidance, how do I do what I do? Any electrician that we train at ABC, especially on the minority side of it, I always ask, why isn't the first job you hire you? Why isn't the first person you hire you? With, with the competencies and proficiencies of being an electrician, you can hang your own shingle out. You can be Jimmy Green Electrical and from that standpoint, hire any more black electricians, minority electricians, women electricians, LGBTQ citizens, whatever that is, but when you're in that power to be able to take that competency and become the, the, the front signer of the check, that is a power that black America needs. I don't need to go over the statistics because they're out there for everybody to see. We could do more, but it first starts with somebody taking a first foot on that red carpet that's rolled out now. Next slide, please. Next slide. I have all these little sayings I love anyway. So here again, these are bringing people together in a room. Uh, what CME will do is bring people who've been there, done that, people who come from where other people are. Contrary to what people uh, think, I grew up in the projects in Flint. I never forget being in the projects in Flint. I go back to Flint, I drive by Howard Estates every day when I'm there, just as a reminder, not just a blessing of where I am, but a reminder that there are people who still are there. And there's an obligation on my part to have gone beyond that, to, to start opening doors, to start bringing people into places that I'm comfortable in. Next slide. So there you go. It's a partnership. And it really is about cultivating talent. It's about a lot of companies right now. I've met with, with uh, Mark Flegenheimer and Mark Bassett, two CEOs, Michigan Sugar and, and Hemlock Semiconductor, who know this. You know, they're not looking for diversity and inclusion. They're looking for talent who is diverse and they create an environment that's inclusive. I always say that that diversity and inclusion is backwards. You need to build first an environment that is, that is inclusive before you start adding different color mixes or races or, or sexual orientations, any of that. You need to have a diverse or uh, inclusion first and then diversity from there. And then again, let's face it. A bigger middle class in Saginaw County is a better middle class for everybody. It is economically much more uh, advantageous for us as an entire region. And it starts with first taking those folks who are down here and building them up. I do believe that everybody who lifts up, lifts up another level. We can be a richer society by taking our lower middle class and providing the resources and access to do that. Let's make it selfish. I, you know, Dick's one of my very best friends. And I always say, you know, despite what you feel, the fact that you want to sell more cars is an incentive in itself to help build this bigger middle class. Now, we're fortunate in Saginaw. We have people who don't just look at it as an economic piece, but they believe in that. That, that is who they are. Their heart and soul believes in bringing people up. And we just need to get more minorities involved in, in, in those rooms and in forming those kind of relationships. And like anything else, and I'll close with this thought, Harold Evans taught me something I'll never forget. Harold said that, you know, the, the, the community is a bank and we were bankers. And he said, here's one thing about banking. You can't withdraw more than you deposit it. You simply cannot do that, which meant give back in your community, volunteer. 
contribute, do something that means at some point when you need to withdraw from it, which is nothing more than asking for business, that's when you know. Now, if you keep getting no's, chances are you probably haven't deposited enough in the community or even yourself. So the investment in community, the investment in yourself is return on investment. You want something from this community. Next slide, please. There you go. So with that in mind, that, that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what CME is designed to do and why the partnership with Saginaw Future and the Chamber is so critical and important. Now I talked about access, resources. I'm gonna turn it over to David Brown and Shilda Braddock from Isabella Bank, and they'll kind of fill you, uh, fill you in on that. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, Veronica and Susan, I appreciate, I'm honored that you would ask me to participate in this. So thank you so much. David, it's all yours. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, very, very good presentation. Thank you for the information that you shared about that awesome program that you uh, have launched. I'm excited about it. It's very much needed for our community. So my hat goes off to you. Um, well, hello, everyone. My name is David Brown. I am a commercial lender with Isabella Bank. Um, I thank Saginaw Chamber of Commerce for inviting me to participate in this webinar. Um, uh, thank you to Isabella Bank for allowing me to speak on behalf of our organization. And I'm excited to be here uh, to share some information. Um, I feel like the uh, information that I'm getting ready to share is basically just kind of the baton that Jimmy's handing off to me to discuss um, how we can continue to strengthen our minority sm small businesses in the area. Um, Jimmy talked about uh, creating jobs in the area, creating opportunities, uh, creating relationships so that you can continue to build up on, upon those opportunities. And um, I think what we have is we have potential, but how do we take that potential to the next level? And I'm hoping that what I have to share with uh, the group today would be beneficial. I was asked to speak upon uh, how banking and banking relationships can help benefit small businesses to grow. So that's what I want to do. I want to share some information about that. Um, but before I do so, just to share you with you who Isabella Bank is, uh, where we are formed and, and kind of where we're going. Uh, Isabella Bank, it was formed in 1903 and it was founded in uh, the Mount Pleasant area. Uh, so the bank has been around for over a hundred years. And uh, we found our way into Saginaw around 2000, the year 2000 when we bought a branch in Hemlock. Uh, since then, we purchased uh, two other branches, or sorry, we purchased a branch in Saginaw and then we formed a branch in downtown Saginaw in the Freeland area uh, within the last decade. So uh, at this point, we are trying our best to uh, continue the, the model of becoming a community bank in the Saginaw area, just like they've established in the surrounding areas. And I'm proud to be a member of, of this community bank here in Saginaw. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to share my presentation with you. Um, it's called Business Banking Essentials. Um, and like I said, my goal today is just to basically share some insight that I feel would be prevalent to small businesses particularly minority businesses that um, you may have gotten some information like this, but this could be new to you. Uh, as I go through the presentation, feel free uh, to shoot some questions through the Q&A. Uh, we'll try to address those as we go along. I'd like to make it as informal as possible, so please interject if you have something to, to ask. I'd be glad to, to address it. Uh, first, foremost, hi, I'm David. Um, meet your banker. So a lot of businesses right now, um, yeah, they have maybe a banking a bank account, but do they know their banker? Do they know the small business officer in their bank that, that's going to play a critical role in the success of their business? It's important that you know that individual, right? Why is business banking relationship important? Well, it's, it's important for a couple of reasons. I've got a couple of bullet points there but I wanna focus just on a couple of them here. Um, number three, staying organized and helping to keep your records. So what I have found through my experience with talking to small business owners is individuals, they could have a viable business, um, but there are some that don't have proper record keeping. So maybe they're not using their banking relationship properly that will allow them to keep themselves organized when it comes to tracking their revenue, 
tracking their expenses and looking at things from that standpoint, banks can help you do that. Um, the other point that I would say is important is building a relationship with a trusted advisor. What you may not know is that your banker can be a great asset to you. Maybe you don't need much from your bank right now, but getting critical advice from them can go a long way and it's free of charge. I love to sit down and talk to business owners, trying to find out what they're looking for, what's their next goal, what's their strategy for growth. Just talking to them and trying to provide resources to them or advice that they might be able to, to use down the road. Um, that banker is also critical when it comes to resources, maybe not within the bank, but outside of the bank. There's a lot of times where business owners are in pursuit of grant opportunities. Here at Isabella Bank, we're proud to say that over the last two years, we've helped three small businesses secure grants through the Elevate program over the last two years of up to $25,000. And that was done because they had relationships with us. They connected with us. And it, when we had information on this grant program, we were able to send it out to them, then walk them through the process of filling out the grant. That trusted advisor is also going to give you good advice when it comes to decisions that you make. You need a team around you that's gonna be able to help support you. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that's important to, to understand. Um, one other thing that I would say about uh, having a business banking relationship is um, a lot of businesses deal with other businesses and they need that business credit. Maybe it's a vendor that you're paying, um, but guess what? Those vendors wanna make sure that you pay on time. So if you have a banking relationship, they can do a credit reference check where they reach out to your bank and that banker can provide information about how you have handled your financial responsibilities with the bank. It can go a long way to adding resources and cash flow capability to your business. So it's important to remember these things when you're, when you're establishing a banking relationship. Now, when you're looking for a banker, what I would suggest to you is that you interview bankers. Yeah, you don't have to just walk into the most convenient branch and start your banking relationship there or go to the place where the fees are the least expensive. Keep in mind that you're also looking for value. And sometimes value comes in the form of, can I sit down, speak to a, a small business banker and he can take time to share with me, he or she. Or can I pick up the phone and call that individual and they'll answer my phone call? Or will they return my emails? Or is this particular banker someone that's more, um, more interested in just pushing out loans, meeting their goals, and they don't, have to, they don't have time or they don't have the desire to continue to help you grow? If that's the case, maybe that's not the banker for you. So what you need to do is you need to find an individual that, you, that is willing to start to forge a relationship with you like Jimmy said, relationships. He talked about it in the form of depositing into your community. And a lot of times we, that's, that's another form of forming relationships. When you form a relationship with individuals, they'll take time for you. They'll pour back into you. And the same thing for your relationship with your banker. If you can find someone that is willing to spend time with you, pour into you and give you great advice, that's someone that's gonna be with you for the long run. So make sure that you interview your banker before you decide to set in and form a relationship with a bank. As we move on, a lot of times um, businesses uh, start, they're generating money, they're figuring their way how to make sure they're paying all their bills. But what I wanna make sure I stress to individuals is that banks can provide a lot of key resources to allow you to do those things efficiently and also keep yourself organized. So a lot of times we need to think about, okay, the components of business, fairly easy. You produce a product or you provide a service, right? Well, you do those things and now you wanna get paid for it, right? So how am I going to get paid in the most efficient, convenient ways possible? Well, we know cash is king and that's great, but in today's society, technology is changing the way that people do business. I know anytime I go into an establishment, one of the first things I'm doing is I'm looking on that front door, do they take credit cards, Visa, MasterCard, something, because I like to pay conveniently. Well, you wanna make that the same way for your customers as, as well. How can I make it convenient for someone to, to pay me so that I can get my revenue as fast as possible, turn around and use it as well for the benefit of growing my business, paying my bills. So how do I wanna get paid? 
Well, there's merchant service uh, services out there that allow you to receive money in various ways. Maybe it's a point of sale system. Maybe it's being able to sell a product online and be able to set it up where you can receive payment. Or you wanna be able to, um, to allow someone to, you invoice someone and they pay you in 30 days. There's different ways that the bank can help you with those things. Well, I got my, my revenue, but guess what? I got to pay for my product or I have to pay my employees. How can I do that efficiently and without a whole lot of labor going into it? There's opportunities for you to, to work with a bank. They provide you services where you can send electronic funds to pay individuals or pay vendors. Well, I want to be able to access my money whenever I want to. Well, that's where online banking comes into play, where you can access your money 24-7. We know bankers... Bankers love bankers hours because we're done around five o'clock most of the time. Well, when the bank doors are closed, you still may be open. How can I access my funds if I need to make transfers, if I need to make deposits? Um, your bank should have convenient ways for you to continue to do business with them. And of course, we also want to make sure that we're protecting your investment. So there's fraud protection services that you want to sit down with your banker and ask about. How can I protect my money? How can I protect against fraud? How can I make sure that I can sleep at night while I'm doing business that my money is taken care of? Take the time to sit down and ask those type of questions. And of course, with the rat race of owning a business, yeah, you can get away from you, but you wanna make sure that you're also strategizing for your long-term goals. So you wanna to talk to someone about investments, trust departments, you want to be able to, to talk about how do I set myself up for my next stage in life. Think about those things from a strategic standpoint, making sure you're planning for the future. Isabella Bank is a great bank that you can come in and you can speak to someone. We have a wealth and investment department. You can speak to individuals and begin to plot out the steps for your next stage in life. The next thing I want to touch on is just um, on the commercial loan side. But my next couple of slides will just kind of take you through um, a snapshot of what commercial loans look like, um, how lenders make decisions, and maybe some of the challenges and pitfalls I've seen small businesses have that I'd like to kind of bring to the forefront so individuals can prepare themselves in a better way. Keep in mind, please, if you do have questions, I'd love to be able to interact with you as we go through this. Um, don't hesitate to interject with a question. I'll try to adjust those as we go along. But just a quick snapshot of how commercial loans look. You can see on the screen that I'm sharing there. Um, there's typically three or four different loan products uh, from the commercial lending standpoint. And I'm not going to go into detail here. They're fairly self-explanatory as you look at these loan products. But what I want to give people an idea of, of really what you're looking for if you come to a bank and you're looking for a loan. What kind of down payment do I need to make? What type of uh, loan terms will I get? Uh, can I get a 30 year mortgage on a commercial real estate? Unfortunately, no, it's, it's a little different on the commercial side and our amortizations are shorter. So they're 15 to 20 years. You need to understand that so you can figure out, okay, as I'm calculating, maybe I'm investing to buy a piece of equipment or investing, investing to buy real estate. What does a payment look like? So you can, these things gives you an idea of what your investment needs to be going into this. And then also um, what reasonably to expect when you speak to a lender about getting a loan. There's a link right there on the page as well that takes you to Isabella Banks website along with uh, various loan products that we have. Um, feel free to, 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 to go to that page and view a little bit more information that we have. But because of time, I'd like to move on, but that should give you a snapshot really what we have to offer. The next page is um, a little bit more where I'll try to dwell a little bit longer on. Um, and it's basically about securing commercial debt. I think what you have right now is you have small businesses in the area that are trying to get, them, get themselves to a point where they're prepared to ask for financing. Perhaps they're growing. Perhaps they want to move from one location to another. They want to expand. They want to add inventory or equipment. Um, they're figuring out how to support their ongoing business and they're looking for maybe some sort of line of credit or something like that. Well, what I want to share with you is kind of how lenders think and how we make our decisions. And then some things that I can share with you about 
um, some challenges and roadblocks because I'd like to be able to have individuals walk away from this experience today with a better understanding of how to prepare themselves. Um, so the, the lenders typically use uh, the five C's of credit as kind of a standard blueprint of how we uh, make lending decisions. And what we like to do is when we sit down with an individual um, that has a loan request, um, there's things that we take into consideration. As we're mitigating the risk of the opportunity, the five C's are things that we, uh, are foundation of credit and decision making. Capital, do you have skin in the game? So a lot of times individuals will come to us and they're looking for a loan. A lot of times we are looking to see how much have you invested in your business? It's important for us to know that because the bank is also looking to see how serious you are about this, this opportunity. And having money to invest in some sort of acquisition that you're making or showing us what you have invested in your business thus far is critical to showing the banker how serious you are in moving forward. As you can see, a lot of the other the other uh, C's to the five C's of credit, capacity, collateral, conditions, and character. I only focus on two at this point. So the, the next one I wanna focus on is capacity. Because a lot of times I think what happens is individuals, they uh, have an idea of what they wanna buy, but understanding what they have the capacity to afford is difficult for them. So a lot of times a banker will break that down by analyzing their financial information, um, but then they have to break the news to them that maybe this type of investment is a little out of uh, their capacity at this time. So understanding what your cash flow is, is critically important. But you can't understand your cash flow unless you keep good financial records. So keeping records are important to allow you to be able to analyze yourself. Okay, what can I afford to pay? Um, running a business is only a little bit different than running your own checkbook. I look at individuals and I tell them a lot of times the way you run your personal finances is how you're going to run your business. If you're organizing your personal finances, I'm pretty confident that you're going to be organized in your, your business finances. But the flip side to that is a lot of times you can tell a lot about how an individual is going to run their business by that same measure. So I tell a lot of people, just like you plan out your monthly budget for your personal finances or a yearly budget, setting your goals, you wanna do the same thing when it comes to your business finances. It's also critically important to get your accountant or your tax preparer involved in that process as early as possible. If you have um, goals or aspirations of let's say, making a large investment, buying a building or buying some equipment one year down the road, two years down the road. Yeah, I'm talking that far out. What you want to be able to do is have those conversations with individuals that are, are in your circle that help you with your financial aspect of your business so that you continue, that you can, can start to plan out, okay, how am I going to position myself to be able to make that acquisition? How do my finances need to look over the course of the next year? over the course of two years so that my business banker can look at this and understand how I've set myself up, what my cash flow looks like so that I can be in position to get that financing that I'm looking for. Because it's critically important. We look at trends. We like to look at the last two to three years. How has your business performed over the course of that time? What has been your cash flow capacity in order to take on new debt? Um, understanding what this new debt or this new asset is going to do for you. How is it going to increase your business? So that's another critical piece that bankers want you to bring to the table. Explain to us how, how this is going to be uh, an, an improvement in efficiency, an improvement to revenue, allow you to generate more income that will help you in the long run. It's important that you're able to explain those types of things. So that's where capacity comes into play. Um, the last point of the five C's that I wanted to touch on was basically just about character. Character is critically important. I consider it probably the most important of the five C's when it comes to credit and decision making. Now, it's one of the most difficult to decipher. It's a very intangible piece of the puzzle, but we can use some tools to determine it. But why is it important? It's important because 
all of the other top four pieces of my five C's can change. Your capital can change, your capacity can decrease, collateral value, assets, values can depreciate versus increase the conditions, the economic conditions, they can change. All of these different components of the five C's of credit can change, but what can't change, what's critical, is the fact that your character doesn't change through that process. Why? Because your banker is relying upon that. Your banker is relying upon the fact that through whatever is going on, you're going to honor your decision to take out this, this, this small business debt, honor figuring out how to make sure that you make the bank whole on the decision to take out the funding. And loan officers, we rely on that from the standpoint, we're making decisions day in and day out about putting our faith in small businesses. And running a small business is tough. Not gonna, um, I can't doubt that for a minute, but what we rely on is the fact that through it all, you're gonna figure out how to make sure that you maintain the relationship with the bank. So with that being said, my, my, at the bottom there, I do have some common challenges and roadblocks that I wanna bring to people's attention because these are things that I have found have been, um, unfortunately, they've stopped individuals from getting what they're looking for at that time. So when you look at the lack of financial track record, um, the negative or derogatory marks on personal credit or the lack of collateral, those are some common things that I have run into where individuals, I'd, I'd sit down and talk to people and I'd say, okay, these are the things that are roadblocks. These are the things that we need to figure out how to rectify before we move forward. And what I find a lot of times is individuals might be running a business for a few years, but they haven't been tracking their financials. And now I have nothing to look at, nothing to under analyze, nothing to, to, to underwrite. You have to understand that for small business loans, a banker can only underwrite what is reported to the tax bureau. Yeah, so you gotta have tax returns, something that shows that your business has, has, has generated the revenue, expenses, and you've reported that. So I need that type of information in order to analyze whether or not I can give you a loan. And unfortunately, a lot of businesses haven't gotten to that point yet. I strongly encourage anyone who's running a business right now, if you're not reporting your financial information for tax purposes, in, in the near future, you have aspirations of securing commercial debt, you need to begin that process. Sit down with a tax preparer, an accountant, a CPA, and begin to talk about, okay, how can I position myself to start to report my business for tax purposes because I have goals down the road of securing credit. Otherwise, I'd have to tell you, you need a good year of track record for me to be able to, to look at your information and make a decision. But ultimately, that's been a huge roadblock and I, I implore anyone that has those type of aspirations to begin to, to do those things. Negative or derogatory marks on personal credit. A lot of people don't understand this, but small businesses are so tied to the owners that lenders look at personal credit as a huge component to, lend, to making loan decisions. So it's very important that you're taking care of any issues that you might have on your credit. Now, I get it. A lot of us in our past, we may have had some issues that have hindered us from being able uh, to um, keep our credit up. And so we've had negative marks on our credit. But what you need to do is look at your credit, begin to make those corrections. If there's debt out there that needs to be taken care of, begin to rectify those things so that you can position yourself. It's critically important that your personal credit is taken care of in order to receive credit on the commercial side. Um, with that being said, I'm going to close, um, but I'd like to share with you a couple of main resources that I'd like to share with people in our area, huge resources that you can, you can tap into that helps you as a small business owner to be successful. Once again, I'm David Brown. I would like to thank you all um, for the time today. Um, who's on your team? This is a circle of individual centers of influence that you want to have on your team. This is just a small slide. The, my slideshow will be downloadable, so you'll be able to get this information. But keep in mind, you can't do it all on your own. You need individuals around you that can help support your vision. This is a, a snapshot of your Isabella Bank Saginaw team, individuals for the bank who are here locally to help you as well for all of your needs. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Kevin Brown. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, David. And uh, thank you to each and every one of you for hosting 
uh, this venue that uh, eventually helps make our whole community healthy. Um, one of the questions is, is, is how do we take businesses that have potential and turn them into profitable businesses? How do we uh, create economic momentum? Um, just before I go there, I want to talk just a little bit about my history. I'm back in Saginaw for 38 years, and uh, I'm pretty sure I'm the only person to win a championship at both Northwood and Saginaw in basketball. But uh, besides that, playing basketball taught me something. I, I led the team in scoring and rebounding three years, but uh, we couldn't win a championship without teamwork and other players. My relationship with the other players and how I managed them uh, help help us win. Um, and it's the same way in business. When you have uh, proven successful leaders like uh, Jimmy Green who are able to teach us about public policy, um, government regulations, I mean, you have to have this knowledge. It's critical uh, to be in the know uh, when you're in business. Also, David Brown to be able to, to school us on, you know, cash flow. Uh, credit management, let's face it, to buy anything in this world, you need the money or you need credit. Um, and being able to position ourselves so that when we uh, are at that point to, uh, to secure uh, these loans or this financing, that we're in a better position to do it. When I talked about um, uh, economic momentum, you know, it's something that, you know, when you look at external economic momentum as how we try to draw dollars into our community, um, outside businesses investing into our community. A lot of that depends on public policy. A lot of that depends on, on, on some of the regulations that, that, that Jimmy uh, has versed us on. However, there's something called internal economic momentum that we can control as well, and, and, and it's, it's a conscious decision uh, to do local business. Uh, if you had three businesses in a community, business A, business B, and business C, uh, and business A uh, invested and spent money with business B and, and so on with business C, it creates a circle and a cycle. And what happens, that dollar, the power of that dollar, uh, as each business, it goes through the process of giving a receipt, uh, another transaction, another business deal, it gives strength to that business. So being able to have internal economic momentum, being able to keep a dollar inside of a community, so that more businesses have a chance to benefit from it. Um, I've, you know, the past two years of my life, I, I had the opportunity to travel around the state of Michigan to uh, every major city working with a lot of small business owners and nonprofit agencies. And I had uh, noticed some, some similarities. There are some communities that seem to, to thrive uh, when it comes to small businesses, and there are others that struggle. Um, you know, when you look at minority businesses, just as minority people um, have a, a different set of challenges um, than, um, than the majority. Um, I've been serving on a task force statewide for uh, racial uh, disparity with COVID-19. I can tell you, even in business, there are challenges that are unique uh, to smaller and minority businesses. Um, I've seen some communities uh, within the community say, hey, you know what? We need a, a, a black business of chamber uh, because there is a white business of chamber. Uh, but the truth is, as Jimmy uh, mentioned, um, has nothing to do with color. Um, as a matter of fact, if you're in business, I think the color that matters is black, ink, or green uh, as far as dollars, as far as profit. Um, so, so when you start looking at the ability for us uh, to look at the resources around us um, and, and, and to be able to become a part of them. Now, one of the challenges, there's nothing wrong with, with minority businesses coming together to talk about, to identify some of those challenges that are unique to the group. However, that's just a starting point. After coming together, it's important to connect, to connect uh, to the organizations in that specific community who are dedicated, uh, who are dedicated to making sure that there is economic momentum. You know, just like the Saginaw Chamber of Commerce, uh, they encourage uh, sometimes give incentives uh, for members to do business with members because they understand the power of a dollar. And, and it doesn't seem like a lot of money, but when you multiply it times 1,000 or 10,000, uh, I don't know what your average ticket for your product or service is, how many more customers a month would it take in order to make a difference in your business? 
Um, so those are some of the things that we have to consider. Um, when you talk about putting bread on the table, um, we've got to get to a table. Uh, there are resources, especially now in this COVID-19 environment, uh, laws change, regulations change, resources change almost overnight. And if you're not connected, one of the biggest disadvantages is you don't have accurate information. So you can never apply for a grant. You can never apply for a loan that you're not aware about. Um, there are different programs that help smaller businesses and you know the chamber makes it their business to know and to stay informed as well. Uh, one of my advices as I travel all over is, is, is to tell small businesses you have to get connected. You have to get to the table. Uh, it does not make a difference um, you know, how much food is on the table um, if you never get there, if, if you never make it to it to participate. There are resources that are right here in Saginaw, uh, in the Saginaw area that are available, but many times uh, businesses do not connect with these resources, many times because they do not know um, about the resources and the opportunity. Now, um, Alpha Media is, is, a, is a company that owns a, a digital platform and also radio stations all across America. Um, and, you know, we're very unique here in Saginaw. Uh, and that what we've uh, built in our radio cluster with WSGW, uh, AM and FM, for local news uh, in Saginaw, you have WTLZ, um, which is our, um, our adult R&B station. Uh, you have WCEN, the Moose, uh, and then WGER, uh, Mix. Uh, not only that, but one of the things when you look at Alpha Media, what we do is we bring people together. We believe that great things happen when you bring people together. It doesn't matter what your business is. You have a message that you need to communicate. You need to reach people, um, not just with radio. Um, and I won't go into a deep uh, presentation on marketing, but there are other ways. Uh, there's this thing called social media uh, that everybody's trying to figure out all of a sudden. Uh, digital marketing, uh, targeted display. There's these words that, that what do they mean? It means reaching the right people at the right time, um, you know, through different networks, um, through different platforms as well. Uh, with Alpha, what we want to do is we want to contribute uh, to positive, healthy uh, economic momentum uh, here in our region, in our, in our community. Now, I encourage small businesses to become a part of your chamber. Uh, the chamber has resources that you are probably not aware of unless you are a member of the chamber. Uh, one thing that you'll have is you'll have accurate information. You'll be in the know. Uh, if there are benefits, if there are programs uh, that you can benefit from, you can uh, benefit from there. The next thing is the relationships. You know, a lot of people spend time, uh, I have an analogy about uh, loading a truck. Um, in our business, whatever you do for a business or service, if you relate it to loading a truck, um, most people out of 24 hours will spend 20, 22, 23 hours loading a truck. And the whole purpose is to get the truck um, from one mountain across the bridge to another mountain. Most of the time put on, 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 on quality control, most of the time put on, on, on how many widgets we can produce or, or, or how, but, but most people make the mistake of not focusing on the relationship, uh, not focusing on the bridge, uh, not strengthening the bridge so that no matter what the weight of the truck is, it's able to support the truck. Um, when, when you build a relationship, it opens other kind of doors. Uh, and, and, and for those opportunities, things that you didn't see coming in your business, opportunities. You meet people who can connect you with product, who can connect you with resources, who can connect you with financing. Um, it builds uh, rapport for your own business. People, when they hear your business name, they can put a face to it. Uh, and as David mentioned, now we're talking about credibility. Now we're not talking about what you do, but we're talking about who you are. And I know for me as a consumer, uh, sometimes I, I would spend more money to do business with someone I like um, because of who they were uh, when I had a choice of a lot of people based on what 
They do. So when you look at programs, um, you know, like David mentioned, the uh, Elevate program that they have, uh, I'm sure that there are a lot of uh, small businesses that are unaware, that, that do not know how uh, to gain access to this resource. Many times these resources can make the difference between uh, a business being profitable and a business having to sell out uh, before too long. So if there's anything that I could say that, that, that really is important more um, than anything else is your relationships in the community, uh, being able to connect with people. Um, great things happen when people come together. We have a chance to look at challenges. We have a chance also to look at uh, potential solutions as well uh, for these problems. Uh, here in this area, uh, we're blessed to have uh, a hardworking chamber. Uh, that works very hard to connect people, and not only that, uh, but to really help influence them as well as far as having that internal economic momentum. And it doesn't happen uh, by chance. It's a conscious decision that if I have a choice to do business uh, online in China or, or, or down the street on Washington and Genesis, guess where I'm going to do I'm going to make a conscious decision. So when we have advocates in our community uh, that continue uh, to inject that oxygen that keeps us all healthy in the business atmosphere like the chamber, uh, I would suggest that you become a member. Not only that, Alpha Media has, uh, we're putting our money where our mouth is as well. If you join the chamber, uh, we're going to give you $500 worth of free advertising. Uh, there are a lot of different ways that you can use it. We have products um, nowadays that will allow you to um, get savvy. To, to become savvy in the uh, uh, digital world, so to say. Um, social stream live, you know, how, how important uh, to be able to, to be on social media now. We have a product that's like uh, Zoom, uh, just like this platform here, but it allows us at the same time to stream live to eight different platforms. So that means if you're working with Alpha Media, you can be on WCEN, The Moose, WGER, The Mix, WSGW, AM, and FM. You can be on WTOZ on our Facebook, on our YouTube, and also even your own company's social media site. Uh, this is a, a product that's used to do uh, to promote your brand. Um, you can also boost engagement. Uh, you can use it to, to generate leads. Uh, and it's something as simple, and I, I can tell you we've been doing them almost every day, and the numbers are phenomenal. You know, I don't know about you, but how many of you uh, could stand to reach another 5,000 people directly with your message, you know, um, for pennies on a dollar? Um, a lot of these products are available right now. When you talk about digital advertising, a lot of people think, hey, I'm on Facebook, I'm doing digital. That is not digital advertising. Uh, we're talking about targeted display. We're talking about uh, reaching people on their devices, on your computers, on your tablets, on your cell phone, whether you're surfing uh, social media or browsing a website. We're able to deliver ads. We can deliver them by demographic based on your lifestyle, where you work, or your income, uh, your family size, home ownership or not. We can target based on geographic based on location. Uh, once again, without being deep into a sales presentation, uh, there are resources that are available to help your business grow. One of the things we have to do, and I want to be proud, and coming back to Saginaw, is, is, is I want to be instrumental in helping bring our, our, our community back together, the business community and our community as a whole. Um, the Chamber is a great place to be able to come together to learn ideals, resources, and build relationships. Uh, and I don't know of any other way to grow businesses. From my experience, uh, some of the communities that are succeeding uh, are utilizing their chamber. Uh, their chamber has diversity. Uh, their chamber represents the community that they live in. So if there are no questions um, at this time, I just want to thank uh, each of you, uh, Michigan Works. I want to thank uh, the chamber uh, for uh, allowing us to have this platform. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over, I think, to Susan. 
Hi, everyone. Thank you, Kevin, so much for that great information. And thank you, everyone. Hello, my name is Susan Moody. I'm the Director of Memberships and Sponsorships for the Saginaw County Chamber of Commerce. And we've got a, just a couple extra minutes. We'll keep the floor open if you have any questions. If we're not able to get to them, uh, we will follow up with you after this meeting. And um, while um, you're typing your questions, I'd like to take this opportunity um, to do a drawing for a free complimentary membership. So for attending today, um, we are giving away a one year uh, chamber membership to help you start growing your network. And as Kevin mentioned, $500 worth of free radio advertising. So I've got my little bucket here and I'm going to draw the winner. And today's winner is Jimmy Wheels, LLC, Raquel Ledsma from Saginaw. Congratulations, Raquel. You are the Hello. Chamber's newest member. <laughs> um, we are honored to have you as a cham Chamber member, and I will connect with you after um, the meeting today, and we're going to help you start growing your network. Um, if you have additional questions about the information you've just heard, you can contact the Chamber and we'll connect you to those resources. I saw a couple questions about the Elevate program, so we'll get that information out to you. Jimmy, Kevin, and David, thank you so much for joining us. David, I want you as my banker now. That was great information. Thank you, thank you very much. And thank you again to our sponsor, uh, premier event sponsor, Great Lakes Bay Michigan Works. Thank you, Cheryl. The Chamber will continue to provide ongoing communication of information through our website, SaginawChamber.org, our newsletter, At a Glance, and our ongoing email updates. We want to thank you for participating in today's webinar and hope that you are all continue to be safe and healthy. We look forward to seeing you again uh, as our guest, and we hope that you consider uh, a chamber membership as part of your business plan. David said, having a team around you that is going to support you is so important, and you can find like-minded people like you in our chamber network. Thank you so much for joining today and have a wonderful afternoon.